guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about using GitHub Actions to set up an advanced CI to run our test suite. Now, our CI is gonna be advanced in this episode because we're gonna be testing against a lot of things. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our gem. We're using the gem noticed as an example. We're gonna test it against Ruby 2.6, 2.7, and 3.0, which is currently Ruby head. And we're going to set it up to run against Rails 6.0, in 6.1 and we're gonna run all of those combinations against SQLite, MySQL, and Postgres. So we're going to have a pretty complicated setup for our CI, but it's going to be testing every combination that we wanna make sure that we support correctly. So that's going to be what we're diving into today. Now, if you haven't watched the gem episode on uh, the appraisal gem, um, the GoRails episode for that will cover installing it and setting it up. But what it allows you to do is appraise your gem against multiple versions of any gem or any other combination of gems. So what we've got here is we've got appraisals against Rails 6 and Rails Master, which is 6.1. And this will test our application against those. And so all we have to do is go into our terminal and run bundle exec appraisal install, which is going to install all of those gems into separate gem files, which is kind of fun. And then we can run bundle exec rails test to run our test suite. So this is going to run the test suite multiple times. It's going to run it once against uh, Rails 6's gem file and the Rails master gem file. So it's pretty straightforward how that works, but that is a crucial piece of having all of this set up. So what we need to do first off is go into our ci.yaml file and you'll see here that we currently have a pretty standard one which will go ahead and set up our database, install Ruby, grab our code, um, cache our gems that we install, install any dependencies we need and run standard RB in our test suite. So what we'll do here is, oops, we want to grab this line um, to run bundle exec appraisal install instead of our basic test suite. So what that will do is run our Rails 6 and 6.1 tests in CI every single time, which is great. Um, but that is going to uh, only take care of the Rails portion of this. The more complicated things that we need to do is actually test against multiple versions of Ruby, and we need to test against multiple databases, which is the most complicated piece. So let's start on the multiple versions of Ruby. We can say strategy matrix in our GitHub Actions. And what this will do is actually run our test job once for each of those matrix entries. So all we need to do is add Ruby and an array, and we give it the versions of Ruby we want to test with. So we'll say, 2.6, 2.7, and head, which will install those versions if we change this to use that matrix. So we'll say matrix.ruby, which will reference matrix.ruby, and because this is run three separate times, that is going to grab the Ruby version that was given to that job. So it will be 2.6, or head, and for clarity here, we can just change this name of that step to matrix with Ruby in it. So we will see which version of Ruby is being installed. Um, and that's going to take care of Ruby for us. Now I've already got matrix Ruby inside of our vendor bundle uh, cache. So when we install the gems, we are going to be getting uh, that cache to the right directory. And then um, all of our Ruby dependencies for different versions are stored and cache separately, because we don't want those to override each other, which could be a problem. For example, when we go to Ruby 3, we might have different executables or something like that. So um, we want those gems to be cached separately for each version. So now we want to create a branch and we're gonna commit that and say, add Ruby and Rails versions to CI. And we're gonna push this up as a new branch. So full CI is what I called it. And we'll push that up to GitHub. And then we can go to our example here. So noticed. And we'll go and create a PR for that. So what we want to do is run this test suite before we merge it into master because um, we're not actually sure if we made any mistakes for this CI yet or not. So we want to run this CI on GitHub Actions before anything 
gets merged. So now, once this is created, you can see that it is running the test for the pull request. And what it's done is it's run those that test job against 26, 27, and head. And that's printed out here even in the names and the titles of these. So once this is done, we'll find out if it succeeded against all three of those. And we can move on to testing our application or our gem in this case against multiple databases. Okay, so all of our tests have passed. We've run Ruby 2.6 against Rails 6.1 and 6.0, and same thing for 2.7 and Ruby Head, which is 3.0. So all of that is working great. You see all of our tests have passed, and we can move on to the database step. Now, the database stuff is a little bit more tricky because, for example, we are installing the dependency for SQLite and we're not really using it. I just copied and pasted that from another example. So we could get rid of that and we could run just against Postgres in this copy of the test suite. Now, if we were to do a database matrix option, we could have MySQL and Postgres and so on, but you'll see that it gets to be trickier when you're trying to make conditional steps in your dependencies here. You could add, you know, if blocks if you wanted, but then you're gonna have to set up separate services for each one, which is gonna be trickier, and you're gonna need different database URLs as well. So rather than doing this, the simpler option is to rename this to SQLite. And we can grab this whole thing and go down to the bottom and paste in a copy for the other databases that we want. So we'll say Postgres for this last one, we will go up to the middle one and rename it to MySQL, and we will have three test jobs for each database. So now we can get rid of on this one, SQLite does not need any services, so we can get rid of that entirely. That test suite now should run a little bit faster because it's not gonna install um, or run Postgres or wait for that to be installed. And then down here we can get rid of PG user. We're gonna need our SQLite3.dev, or hyphen dev, and we can change our database URL to use SQLite here. So this is going to end up just being an environment variable that we use. And for SQLite, we don't really need to do much here. We can just say SQLite notice test, and that should be enough to uh, set that up. There's not really a whole lot that we need to do in that case. So for MySQL, we're gonna to need to change the service to MySQL, and then we'll add that as um, a section here. So we're gonna need the MySQL version eight Docker image, and then our environment variables and ports are gonna be a little bit different. We are going to use 3306 for our ports, and then our environment variables are gonna be MySQL root password, and we can just set that to something simple like password and MySQL database, we'll call it test. And then we can use the options here. We'll say uh, dash dash health command equals MySQL admin ping. And then dash dash health interval is 10 seconds and health timeout equals five seconds and health retries equals three. So what that will do is just make sure that before anything continues, we will have MySQL uh, successfully running and just make sure that it is fully active, that we can connect to it before we move on. Now down here in the install dependencies, we can get rid of the SQLite section. And if we needed to, we could install the MySQL client, but we actually don't have to because the Ubuntu image already comes with that pre-installed. So all we need to do is install our gem dependencies and that is it. Now the last step is to change our MySQL 2 protocol and our username and password here, which is going to be root at password and we'll do 127.0.0.1, 3306 for the port and our database name is test. We don't need our PG user and we're good to go. So for the last one, we can get rid of the apt update and SQLite uh, dot dev or dev package in there. And I don't believe we need this PG user anyway, so we can get rid of that. And now our test suite has our service for Postgres 
and are serviced for MySQL set up independently so that they will run totally separately and they can run at different times and they're not waiting for both of those Docker images to download and boot up. Um, it's going to be a lot quicker and our SQLite one should be even faster because that is all it needs to do. Now, right now I'm installing libsqlite3, but because Postgres and MySQL clients are already installed, libsqlite3 might also be a step you could remove as well, which would help speed this up even more. So then the last step for these is that if you want to um, keep your gems set up separately, uh, you can. So you can change this key to have the SQLite, Postgres, or MySQL included for each one of those uh, separately so that you have those gems being cached. But what we're going to do is go into our gem spec and we're going to add development dependencies for MySQL 2. And if yours doesn't have it already, we'll have PG installed as well. SQLite is automatically required by Rails, so we don't have to worry about that. We just want to make sure that all of our database gems are available when we run our test suite. So then we can go to our terminal and we can run bundle to install that. And that will make sure all of our gems are available when we commit and push this up to GitHub. So I've commit and push those off screen and now you can see our version of the CI that is running where it runs SQLite 2.6, SQLite 2.7, SQLite head, and the same for MySQL and Postgres. And all of those are going to be queued up now and run uh, our full test suite. So that's gonna be really, really handy to go through and take care of running our test suite against every combination that we want to make sure that we support. So that will be really great for open source gems where you want to make sure you have strong compatibility against different databases like Noticed where we're storing um, objects in a JSONB column for Postgres, but JSON for MySQL and a serialized text column for SQLite. So that is something I definitely want to support testing against multiple databases. So we'll let this run and see how it goes. And there you have it. We have a full CI running against multiple versions of Ruby, Rails, and databases all in one, which is awesome. Now this is great and where it ends for testing the notice gem, but to take it another step, you can actually use GitHub Actions to continuously deploy as well. So you'll run your tests and then you can deploy. So what you want for that is either you want a GitHub Action um, step that actually deploys after your tests have succeeded. So I have one here for Hatchbox. This one you can add to GitHub Actions and you just add it as a second step and you add your deploy key and you're good to go. That will take care of deploying to Hatchbox. There's another one to deploy to Heroku, which you just add your credentials and your app name and your email and it will trigger a deployment to Heroku. But if you also need something more complex, you can set up a separate job that waits for other jobs to be finished before it runs. So you can set up your CI job to run the tests then you can set up your deployment job, your continuous deployment or CD, and have that job depend upon the parent to trigger the deployment uh, automatically. So that's it for this episode. We got through some advanced GitHub Actions setups where we're doing CI and we can even do CD very easily if we want. Um, this is perfect. If you want to take a look at this specific configuration, go to GitHub, um, check out the notice gem and go to the ci.yaml file. And you'll see all the source code for that here when I'm mer merging that pull request. That's the other pro tip I want to give you. Do this in a pull request and then merge it in and you can squash all of those test commits as you go through because um, as you build this, it's just going to be lots of commits for you to test and fix little bugs here and there. It's going to be kind of a tedious process to set up a good GitHub Action CI, but once you get it going, it is invaluable. So take a look at GitHub Actions. It's really great. It's really improved my workflow on all of my gems and Rails apps. So that's it for this episode, and we will talk about continuous deployment in the future. Peace.